Look, there's a vine snake. Look, look, look. So here we are up in the mountains exploring a rich tropical rainforest in a province called Laguna in the Philippines. We headed up at night not just to avoid the heat, but we were also hoping to run into some of its nocturnal residents. Ew, it must on me. So this is the Asian vine snake and they're called vine snakes because look at how vine-like its body is. It's kind of different from holding other snakes because it's really really thin. And then if you look at the head, that's another characteristic that the Asian vine snake has is the pointed tip of the head that it has. It's almost like a pencil shape. Such a beautiful snake. I'm just super glad that we were able to find one tonight, right Kyle? Oh yes. Yes! Oh, I'm so happy. On our way up, we encountered many different species. From molting insects to lizards and even frogs. We encountered a Laguna del Bay frog sitting on top of a huge rock. It wasn't shy at all and in fact allowed us to take a lot of good close-ups of him. Oh my god, it's a good frog. Oh my god. No! <laughs> Throughout the trip, one critter that kept appearing was the flame leg millipede. It was strikingly red and had very vibrant yellow legs. When predators see animals like this in the wild, animals that look so colorful, they tend to think that those brightly colored animals are poisonous. So that is exactly what it's doing. Another interesting fact about this millipede is it actually produces cyanide. Cyanide is a chemical that it emits so that it can kill other insects that it feeds on. And that chemical is really deadly for those insects. As deadly as it is to the insects it preys on, to us humans, it's practically harmless. The worst thing that can happen if you get that cyanide emitted on you is you can get a rash or a skin allergy. Okay, so I'm gonna set up my tent right here. First, I'm gonna clear the area. <laughs> what is that? Clear the area of any rubbish. Whoa. Okay. So we're just going to put these together. Uh. Oh. Hey, there we go. Here we go. Oh. oh my gosh. Are you... Sorry. 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 <laughs> Are you okay? Oh yes. I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay. Well, also, also make sure that you tie this part up so that it doesn't get uprooted. Wait, wait. There's a visitor. Spider. Okay, let's get it done. Good morning guys. So what I have here is butcho koi. Ano ba to? Bayo ko. Bayo ko. Bayo ko. Which is a, it's a large snail. And this is just caught here. Our friend cooked it. So I'm gonna try it out. Never had butcho koi. Ba bayo ko before. <laughs> some suka. This is vinegar. Nice. <laughs> Verdict, it's not for me. 
Hey guys, it's Jazz and this is Wild Life Matters and we're about to go herping here in a rainforest in Laguna, Philippines. So, let's go, shall we? So Jazz, what's herping? Well, herping is... Well, it came from the word... It came from herpetology which is basically the study of reptiles and amphibians. Um, so herping is like kind of a, the term used when you're going out and exploring, looking for just exactly that, reptiles and amphibians. Nice. So herping is kind of like hiking, but it's not just hiking. It's hiking while actively on the lookout for animals. You watch your step. <laughs> Looking to see if there are any insects or bugs crawling inside here. I'm going inside a tree! <laughs> um. Okay, right now we are inside an old we're not, we're not. No. We were really hoping to find something inside this tree. It's so sad. But sadly, no luck. So we just kept going, and not too long after, we ran into one of my favorite finds from the trip, the smooth-scaled mountain rat snake. Look how long this is. I can't even stretch that long. It's bigger than me. This is the smooth-scaled mountain rat snake. Now this snake is endemic to the Philippines. They are colubrids. Not so bad. So it's called a mountain rat snake because supposedly it eats rats, but honestly, they prefer to eat frogs, whether dead or alive. They should really be called a mountain frog snake. <laughs> beautiful creature. You can only find it here in the Philippines. Again, another beautiful endemic. Such a cool snake. My gosh. It really feels like I'm holding a king cobra right now. <laughs> This snake is often mistaken for king cobras because of how similar their bodies look. They both have long bodies with long tails and share the same coloration with local Philippine king cobras. Though they do not have hoods like cobras do, they can inflate their lungs and puff up their upper bodies to make themselves look bigger in order to scare away predators. The same reason why cobras also raise up their hoods. Look at the eyes! The eyes are so big and cute! And it also has round pupils, just like the King Cobra. If you look at the body, it's really very similar. Get a close-up on that. Really looks like a King Cobra from afar. In fact, the last time I saw a King Cobra, it was also this big. Unlike King Cobras, they are non-venomous. In fact, they're not harmful to humans at all. Unless you get a nasty bite, but you know, that's the worst thing that can happen. Whoop, nice. So the sad thing is, because they look like king cobras, they are often killed for it. But the sadder thing is the fact that we are even killing snakes at all. You know, snakes are not really after humans. There's no snake that's really actively looking to hurt a human. If 
ever a snake hurts a human, usually it's just out of self-defense. Just wants to be left alone. So if you see a mountain rat snake, or if you see a king cobra, the best thing that you can do is leave it alone. If it comes inside your territory, like in your homes, call someone who can help you get it out. But you know, snakes deserve to live on this planet just like we do. And they also have a very important role in making sure that, you know, our planet is at balance. So let's protect even the species that we are afraid of. Like the mountain rat snake. And to show you guys that this snake has really no intention of harming me and that it just wants to flee, Put it down and release it back into the water. Let's go. Passed by my foot over there. Yep, he's not going for me. He doesn't care. He doesn't care. Bye, snake. After releasing the mountain rat snake, we continued on our journey deeper into the rainforest. Passing through thorny plants, and endlessly climbing one huge rock after another. Oh look, another so, fire leg millipede. So these guys are everywhere. But I'm gonna show you a cool trick that it does, uh, which is that it can actually walk underwater. So it's not gonna drown, it's just gonna walk underwater. Look, check this out. So these millipedes mainly feed on smaller insects and leaf litter. They're actually very important for the environment because they help in recycling to make up good soil. As the sun was starting to set, we had to return to base camp and call it a day. Living in the mountains with no source of electricity, we had to make a fire from scratch to cook our dinner with. There's so many more species we encountered on this trip that we want to show you. So we'll save it for a part two of this episode that you can check out next week. So stay tuned. But for now, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel so we can keep the conversation going. Because every piece of wildlife matters.